Great, welcome. We have everybody here now. Aloha, Meliana. Yay, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too many links, too many, too many Zoom, Zoom things. It's okay, no one, no worries. Wonderful to see you, and it's great to see everybody who's able to join us here today. This is really uh, just in an informal kind of talk story session um, from our two teams, the Kumu Project team and the In Between, the Reflections on the In Between uh, team, to talk about our projects um, that have kind of come out of this time and two separate projects, but you'll see they're very parallel, very similar in uh, their intention. And so we're just excited to share with you about the projects, kind of where the projects have come from, the intention behind our projects. We're so glad you've joined us um, to hear more information about these projects. Um, and then have you have a, an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Um, so our team for the Kumu project, which is a project um, that's kind of been started through the East West Center Arts Program team. So that's myself. The, my name's Annie Reynolds. I'm the curator of the East West Center Gallery. And Eric Chang, who's the coordinator of the East West Center Arts Program. And we also have Navahine Lanzalati, who is our East West Center Arts Program assistant. And we have our very own Kumu Meliana, Meliana Meyer, who is an East West Center alum, and we're just so thrilled to bring her on um, as part of this project as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have two of, of our beloved East West Center students who are here to talk about their project, uh, the Reflections on the In-Between, which is a publication that they're working on and inviting uh, our entire East West Center Ohana community uh, to, to participate in. So we really want to get the word out. We're getting towards the end. Uh, I think their submissions are due at the end of the month. So getting a last push at the end of March. So getting a last push out. So we have uh, Leana Naholowa'a from Guam, who's here with us. And another student, Saraf Naim, who is here from Pakistan, a student here from Pakistan. So they'll be talking to us about their project. And before we get started today with um, just kind of talking through these um, stories, I wanted to introduce Christina Monroe, who's the Director of Le Alumni Engagement at the East West Center, and she's going to welcome you all as well. Aloha, everyone. So good to see everybody here. Um, Really excited about this project. Delighted that the Office of Alumni Engagement can be involved. Very excited to engage our whole Ohana um, alumni and friends in expressing ourselves in, in a different way and engaging with each other in a new way as we host a series of workshops. Um, definitely one with our um, Indian alumni and as well, hopefully with some other chapters. So look forward to those. Look forward to interacting with you in a, in a creative way. So thankful to the uh, arts program um, and everybody involved to give us this opportunity to express ourselves and share about what's been a very interesting and challenging year. I think we lost you, but thank you, Christina. Thank you. You, got, you. you gave everybody who's not here in Hawaii a little taste of the weather here in Hawaii and what it feels like to be out in the open air. So thank you, Christina, and thank you for, um, for being such an integral part to this, uh, to this project as well and helping us to get the word out, especially to the alumni, which is just really incredible uh, when you think about the East West Center um, and what this pandemic has really shown us too is that what we've been able to do is, as we've had to go to teleworking and virtual programming, how easily you know we've been able to suddenly engage on a global level. Um, it's not we're not able to do the in-person work that we've been doing, but this pivot to virtual has been really profound in terms of re-engaging globally with with our Ohana that's um, based around the region. So I have a I was I have a a little bit of a. Um, presentation to share with you. But this is also just a little bit more talk story. Um, I don't want it to be too formal, but I thought it's nice to share some images, um, right. some memories also of the East West Center for everybody. Um, so our project from the East West Center is um, arts program and with uh, Kumu Meliana is the Kumu project. 
And we'll be talking more and more about, about the meaning behind this, but as many of you know, kumu uh, in Hawaiian is teacher. And so this is honoring our teacher, those that came before us, learning also from kumu miliana, how there's also many other meanings to the word kumu, also tree as a resource too, and she'll speak more deeply um, to that as well. But we've been kind of talking about this, this um, kind of reflecting on our experiences and uh, at the East West Center and how we've all kind of have this shared experience and the resources and that we're all resources for one another. And so in through this project, we're really wanting to re-engage. And so everything about our project, we have one central, um, let's see if I can, we have one central uh, website where you can go to for all of the information. So this has all of the links for any of the workshops that you would want to sign up for. And that's our email address too. And so all of this is on the, the website that we can also put into the link. But with this project, we really wanted to engage um, in a community effort um, together. And that community for us is this international community and take advantage of this time where we've, we're unable to, uh, interact with our neighbors, but we can uh, engage globally. And so we're really putting a call out to our entire East West Center Ohana through this project. And it's been really wonderful working with the, the students at the East West Center to um, on their project, the in-between project, because we've been able, and we will be able to continue to interweave our, pro, our projects together. Um, really wanting to engage the community and really want people to reflect on this time. We, you know, I've been looking back at our permanent collection and realizing how profound each of the art pieces that we have in our own permanent collection is to being a window into the past, into the history of the East West Center. And so in a way wanting to create and, and make together um, a window into this period of time, because in 20 years we'll want People will want to know what it was like to be experiencing this time. And at the same time, it gives us a time to reflect and kind of meditate. And so we'll be thinking about our past experiences at the East West Center, sort of what this time period has been for us with all of the suffering, with all the hardship, but as well as the silver linings that have come through. And then thinking in this time, sort of what our hopes are for the future after we get through this, this um, kind of this COVID time. Our project, as you'll see, um, really represents this idea of transformation and renewal. So through the project, we'll be inviting you to take uh, part in workshops with Kumu Meliana, and I'll be there with her as well uh, through the month of March. And these are optional workshops, but really a fun time to get together, um, reflect uh, and brainstorm together and just talk about sort of these three concepts of past, present, and future of this project. And everybody will be mailing in a booklet, kind of as an offering to the project. Each individual have a different story to share, um, but then we're all coming together in a shared intention. And then we'll be um, receiving those booklets here at the East West Center. And then we'll be creating an art installation at the East West Center. And we'll also have um, an opening event to uh, honor that project when it's in its final form. And then afterwards, each of the participants um, will be uh, dismantling the project and then kind of reconfiguring it and returning a memento to each of the participants as well. So you'll see through that project and that process of full transformation. So this is our flyer that you may have seen and you can click on that um, on our website. So if you have the website, um, that's the home base to go to. So if you want to participate in any of the workshops, um, if you're curious of any information you need to find, um, find if you have questions for us, this is where you can go to, to find any information. And so next, I would like to ask Kumu Meliana to please, um, share her thoughts on this project. It, this project would absolutely not be possible without her. We brought her in as an East West Center alum, uh, artist, scholar, uh, cultural resource. Um, she, she's done incredible work with community arts. And that's not something that our team uh, is, does <laughs> in our normal programming in a normal time. So bringing in her 
her expertise has been really incredible because she made us really dive deep in every in every um, in every meeting we had and kind of developing this project together. And I love that it's a simple project. It's a simple thing that we're asking for, but there's really a lot of depth uh, beneath it. And we've only been able to come to a project like this because of Meliana. So Meliana, if you wouldn't mind just sharing some thoughts on the on this project. Hello, my Kako. It's so wonderful to be with you all. Seriously, yay. Hi, Liana. Hi, everybody. Sadaf, Jason, Navahine, Blaine, Annie, everyone. You're my first top level here. I can't see anything else. But I just, I wanted you all to know how, um, I don't want to start crying because it's a little early for that. But I, it's like a big deal, you know. This has been a, this has been a profoundly um, growth-filled experience. Not to mention difficult, awful, and horrible, and everything else. Um, but but now to actually put our intentions into work for for this project and for the in-between project, writing or arting, as I say, or drawing. Um, gives us an opportunity actually to do some very meaningful things together. And I think that's what Hawaii offers to this group. The East West Center is not located in any other place but Hawaii, as in, <laughs> I have to show you an image just so that you know exactly where I'm coming from, okay? Of, of course, I'm having to find it right now. Um, it's a very important image. Um, and I will find it as I'm talking. I'm looking for Hawaii in the center of the world. So it, oh, here it is. Okay, you guys can see this, right? Um, no. Oh, there we are. There we are. Can you see us? Okay, so it's pretty funny because I do not have a poor sense of scale. I'm just telling you that this is, we are being Hawaii centric. We are not <laughs> orienting from. The United States, we're orienting from the Pacific, we're orienting from the middle of the Pacific. And of course, if we were uh, to scale, we wouldn't even see us. But because we're being Hawaii centric, you got us front and center. So I want you to know that that's important to me, because that's also going to ground us all in terms of our work together. Okay, very, very important. And I'm going to get rid of this background. But before we get rid of it, this is part of a a 20 foot mural about um, a Hawaiian point of view in terms of um, our deep stories and the need for our stories and why they're so important uh, in the backdrop of, of all of that cacophony of, of um, Waikiki and the pain and the trauma of all of that tourism and what that represents to a lot of us uh, in Hawaii. So. It's important that you guys know that, you know, as much as this is a great old wonderful project, we are actually coming into just, um, okay, I just did a couple workshops. So can you tell I've got all my gear everywhere? Um, just understand that when we work together, what we're trying to do is um, create these little books. And I'm bringing this up so that you guys, those of you who haven't seen this kind of book, um, will know what we're talking about. Oh. Meliana, we lost your video. There you are. All right. I'm so sorry. Now you're stuck in my kitchen with all sorts of other stuff. Okay. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but I will say this is important to me um, because this is where we're going. We're, we're at that place in the world where we're doing a macro dive into um, the world and our, our place in it. Um, this is part of another book. So it's COVID as it has impacted us and um, what we're using for energy to help heal and revitalize and the radiance of things. And then our inner visions, our personal or intimate visions. And the reason this is important is because when you look at this as an image, you're reading a story, okay? So it's a story with uh, visuals. And this is our first language. This is certainly is my language, which is why I speak it and write it and, and dream it and paint it. Um, what's exciting about the Kumu project is that each of us in our own communities will do, be doing work about this time. So this is just an example. Um, this is not necessarily something to follow, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of books that have 
have to do specifically with my um, ideas about being a Kumu, um, having Kumu, having teachers, understanding the importance of nature uh, in our lives today. And that the fact that the pandemic is not just about us, it's about us saving the planet. It's about us balancing or rebalancing. It's about us uh, helping each other. So this is kind of a deep, deep uh, opportunity. And the best part about this book is that it's like a piece of paper and it's not just something that looks like this, which is like DOA. It's not a flat that has no life to it. We turned a, a, a piece of paper into a book, okay? And this is just important for you to know because we're talking about transformation. For all of us, this work is about transformation. And this is just a little important uh, object lesson because it's hard to read what this is, okay? Um, this might be what happens when we receive work from other countries, because you're gonna go, what the heck is that? It could be a kanji, it could be a part of something. But the, what you're gonna see in the reveal is profound, right? Right, right, right? Okay, so ta-da! I had to do that for a theology uh, class and I didn't wanna do the Christian thing because I, I, I love Buddhist tenets and, and I've got a, a lot of uh, tendencies that are Eastern in my psyche and life. So this is important for you to see. This is a big message that ended up folded in a book that was something else, right? And that this is right hot off the press, like, you know, a couple months worth. So you guys are the first ones to see that. The reason I'm sharing these things is because we need to do something immediately. So if we can quicken our ideas and bring our ideas together with these two projects, I think we're gonna just rock and roll. And I'm just really thrilled to be included, to be invited, to be a part of you extraordinary people because we get to have fun and we get to learn and we get to exchange. It doesn't get much better, seriously, except to be in person and, and have uh, us cook for each other. I love to, to have dinner parties and things. So wherever you guys all are, you're all invited to my house where, you know, at some point, because I love to cook and this is, you know, eat and joy central right here. So <laughs> thank you all for your, uh, your time because I know we're all gonna be sharing um, right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you, mahalo. Mahalo, Meliana, and we can't wait to come over and eat and enjoy everybody's time and energy together in one room again. But until okay. then, here okay. we are. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this project really would not be possible without you, you know, so we're so thankful to have your your guidance and your wisdom on this too. And looking forward to continuing this project with you. We brought it this far, so. Well, I gotta tell you all, I'm feeling a little old because, <laughs> because all those people in this show I know personally, or many of them, you know, and, and this was in the, in the, in the 90s, early, eight, at late 80s. So, you know, we're talking about a bit of time ago and I'm all good with that, but it just does remind me that yikes, um, you know, time travels and time goes on. So it'll be interesting to see what we get in terms of the arting and the writing, because I think the projects are really brilliant. They will be brilliant separately and together. So I just really invite all of this beautiful creative energy. I'm so thrilled. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Wonderful. Mahalo, Meliana. And I'd like to now ask Eric Chang, our arts program coordinator, to kind of share his thoughts and his impressions of this project as we've been kind of developing it, just putting you on the spot here. <laughs> no problem. Thanks, Annie. Aloha, my kako. Uh, my name's Eric. I'm the coordinator of the arts program, ISWA Center, working with Annie and Nava. Um, and um, Meliana on this project. And thank you, Meliana and Annie for sharing so much uh, just now. It's um, been a real highlight of my 2020 talking about this project and um, finding ways to bring it together. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, the early days of the pandemic um, uh, with all the Kind of turmoil that we've that we all experienced um, happened. Uh, Annie and I we started talking about well what what can we do what should we do um, in our roles at the East West Center and uh, it was wonderful to to learn that the East West Center students 
um, we're having these same conversations um, and just recognizing the, the global effect of this pandemic. Uh, of course, it's uh, all affected us in different ways, um, but it has affected everyone. Um, and just recognizing that this is such a unique moment for us and bringing Kumu Melian into the conversation um, was so meaningful for us. And I can't thank you enough, Meliana, for um, being our Kumu in this project um, in all of the ways, you know, as, as a resource um, to ground us, to um, connect us and our thoughts in, in different ways. And you know, I just, I love to the conversations that we had um, finding meaning and connection um, as we, you know, um, created a path um, to, to this moment and, and the beginning of this project. Um, it was, you know, part of it was taking this opportunity to, you know, turning this challenge into an opportunity to really represent um, the global reach that the East West Center has had over 60 years, how, how many um, individuals, how many lives have been touched um, by the center and its mission globally. So thinking about that as kind of a parallel and a counter to the, the global effects of the pandemic and finding a way to represent um, both individual and, and uh, collective voice uh, through what we um, thought to offer as an opportunity for people to connect. So really looking forward to, um, to how, how it turns out, um, you know, putting a call out to the East West Center community. And this means um, like Annie said, staff, students, alumni, um, friends, supporters, family, um, partners, you know, you don't just have had to be a, a East West Center student to participate. This is really um, uh, reaching out to kind of our collective Ohana and really looking forward to taking the ne next steps um, in this project and and thank you all for for your energy and your talents and your support wonderful thank you eric and i'd like to also ask navahine if you would share your thoughts kind of on our process so far and what this project means to you hello aloha Ko. um i as i was thinking about this reflecting on this process i um just feeling really grateful as was already articulated to uh, be um, to be able to be a part of this process behind the scenes with uh, Kuma Meliana um, leading us along. And I think one of the things that, that really stood out, stuck out, um, that stuck with me in that process was the need for uh, collaboration, but also the need for uh, creating space for ourselves individually to reflect, especially in uh, in this personal community global uh, crisis, culmination of crisis that's that's occurred this past year. So um, I um, am relatively new to the center. I'm a program assistant with the art program since July, and I'm. Just really excited. Uh, this is an opportunity to connect to just the extremely wide reach of the center and the alumni. You know, from someone kind of opposite end of you, Kumamiliana, of you know, new to that network, um, and from the outside, always always was amazed by the programs at the East West Center, but never really had a sense of that wide reach of the alumni and all of the amazing work that all the alumni are now doing throughout the world. Um, so I am just excited for everyone to take this up as an opportunity to share, come together, but also take that time for yourselves um, to reflect in a way that's just, you know, get in a way that you might not think you need <laughs> and drawing and getting your and getting your your thoughts down in color. Um, so I, I was looking at my notes as I was as I was uh, preparing, and it says Meliana meeting Kumu project title, because we, we had just decided, <laughs> and it says, uh, resource is the relationship. 
Um, so I'm just really excited again um, for everyone, for what everyone will contribute and mahalo again to, to Kumameliana and, the, and Annie and Eric as well for, for getting the project to this launch. Great, thank you, Navahine. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're really excited to be launching. We've been working on our project since about November, trying to develop the concept. Um, and so it's been quite a journey. Um, so we're really happy to be here and be bringing everybody into this project. It's really special for us. Um, and we can talk a little bit more at the end and we'll have time for a Q&A, but I wanted to kind of give the floor um, to our colleagues uh, who are working on the reflections on the in-between uh, publication project. So it's really, these projects are really kind of coexisting, they're intertwining and we've been in collaboration talking about how we can even further um, continue the collaboration, but it's been really wonderful getting to know um, Leana and Sadaf and their team. Um, you know, I understand how difficult it is just to be doing graduate work is enough work on its own. I can't imagine doing graduate work in a pandemic. And then you're taking on this entire project where you're putting a call out to the entire East West Center uh, community and Ohana on top of that. So big shout out to all of you for all of the work and commitment that you've done. Because I know you guys have been really working on this project since I think August or September even when you were all um, where this came from the idea of the in-between. So I'd like to invite Leana to speak first. So Leana is a graduate student, a PhD student in the English department from Guam, but she's joining us from a quarantine in, in Lincoln Hall, just next door. Aloha, Leana. Aloha and half a day. Um, thank you all so much for um, hosting this information session. And thank you, Annie, for always being so um, mindful and inclusive of our project alongside yours, because I feel like there's so much um, overlap and um, sharing of intention. Um, and thank you, uh, Kumu Meliana, for um, a, write, a art workshop I had attended <laughs> um, last semester. That was so fun. And I, I just want to say, about the Kumu project that there's something nice about um, returning us to things that are more tangible. There's too many of these Zoom meetings and online meetings and we yearn for that face-to-face -face interaction. Likewise, there's there's too much digital work. And when I when I was drawing alongside Kumu drawing, I mean, it was so wonderful to see how talented she is. Um, but then just that touching of a pen or paper just kind of grounds you in a way that I feel that we all really need um, during this time. And so I really appreciate the Kumu project and all that it's um, doing. Um, I, I do wanna talk about the uh, reflections on the in-between project a little bit in terms of giving you an overview of it. And it's essentially um, has a lot to do with um, three things. Um, wanting to take advantage of being at the start of the pandemic, I know, we might think we're at the middle or end of it, but I honestly think we are in the new normal um, and that our lives before we can never return to. And so I like to think of what happened in March of last year up until this very day we're in right now as being still at the very beginning of something, a new way of being, a new way of life. And so, so much of, of this project is taking advantage of what does that start look like? What, is, what, is, what does that transitional time look like when we're, we're, we've lost so much and we're adjusting to so much? The second thing I wanna take advantage of is being part of an institution whose core work includes supporting graduate students who are all already active writers, <laughs> and, but yet um, through like open mic events or just hanging out in Zoom sessions with others, you see that um, these grad students are also amazing musicians, amazing artists. I mean, the things they do in what you call their spare time or their other time, you know, when we're so involved in grad work is amazing. And so um, something like a, a digital publication or a publication that includes a lot of writing may be intimidating to people, but I think our community of graduate students and then who then go on to be alumni and interact with, you know, professionals all over the world, you know, I think we all might be comfortable with writing. And so I'm taking advantage of that. Um, and also, again, being part of this international community. Um, this pandemic experience has been planet wide. Um, and yet being part of the East West Center means that we have more access to understanding other people's experiences 
in their different countries and homelands and home islands that they come from, and that I could very easily talk to them about what's going on back home, um, which I may not be able to do if I was just, if I was not part of the East West Center and I was just watching things on television and that's all the information I got. And so um, that's really sort of where this project was born is wanting to collect people's experiences of what we're going through and sort of seal it in a time capsule. And so I'm starting to think about this project as more like time capsule reflections. Um, when we look back into this time capsule, we will see the beginning of the new normal. We will see the beginning of this pandemic. And there has been a lot of social and political change so far for better or worse. Um, we've had to adjust to social distancing and lockdown. Um, and, but then we've also done a lot of building community and helping one another. I mean, we've, we've tried, to, we've had to figure out how to do that despite all the limitations we've been living with. And so these reflections, I want to encourage everyone to think of them. I, I mean, reflections is, <laughs> and Hartman encouraged me to start thinking about it as reflecting versus writing, because writing might be intimidating or, or, you know, people might have issues around that, but, or just, you know, um, but I think that thinking about them as reflections really shows the um, expansiveness of that term and that it could be a writing, it could be through writing that we reflect, it could be through photography, it could be through drawing, there are many ways to reflect. Um, and so these reflections are of the transition, the actual in between of the new normal, the painful adjustments, the moments of resiliency, like reflecting on that, we're sort of creating these parameters around um, when we would like people to create what they will be submitting to us that we ask that it had been something that you created during the pandemic. So thinking about February, March of last year up until today, up until the deadline. And then also these reflections can just be about the new normal, right? Um, and so, so much of these reflections can be in the form of visual art, illustrations, um, cartoons, photography, um, collages, infographics, sort of like the digital um, art that we see today, personal essays, poetry, creative nonfiction, articles, reports, social media posts, song lyrics, mo'olelo, um, and any other genre of artistic and written expression. And um, we actually um, welcome submissions in all languages um, that are represented in the East by the East West Center. And so I'm really excited to hopefully see submissions um, in a multitude of languages. Um, and uh, I really hope that I can um, answer any questions you may have um, today. And if you um, need anything, we have a, uh, a submission form that I could stick in the chat and maybe include it with this post. Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you. And Navahine beat you to it. It's already right. Oh, good. <laughs> but thank you so much. Yeah. And and I think the idea for both of these projects to get across, I, you know, it's interesting that that Anne mentioned that writing is maybe say reflections instead of writing because it's so intimidating. And and that's, you know, the the first thing that a lot of people say is, oh, I don't have any artistic talent uh, when we say we're doing an art project. But this isn't that's not what this is about. It's you have thoughts, you have feelings, you're living through this experience and anything that you can kind of put out, put on paper, putting your thoughts down, there's so much to going through that process. And, and it's not about talent, it's about kind of what, what you have to give. And I think that's one of those connections we've found through these two projects together. So thank you so much, Liana. And I'd also like to um, uh, welcome Sadaf Naim, who is a graduate student in the art department who's from Pakistan, who's also joining us from here in Honolulu, um, to speak about the in-between project kind of from, from the perspective of a visual artist. Thank you, Annie. Um, uh, I think uh, this uh, in-between project, uh, because of its digitalization or digital publication uh, uh, manner, uh, it has um, some really worst uh, uh, it's it's actually a very flexible project in terms of you know uh reflecting your thoughts in a collective way throughout the world which we are actually experiencing uh whatever we are experiencing so it's a i think it's a great opportunity to become a, a part or to be evident uh the 
you know, the change uh, or this uh, uh, new normal thing uh, and share our things together. And it's also, I think uh, for me, it's also a kind of a service, you know, where you actually can become a, become an inspiration for so many, you know, how you are dealing with your uh, things or how uh, you have experienced all these changes. Um, so, um, because it would be a digital publication, so it is actually a really, um, you know, flexible ways of reflecting your, uh, uh, your experiences. Uh, <clears throat> It can be, you know, you're, you're not supposed to be an, um, a formal artist. So, uh, you know, there are many ways you can be a photographer, you can make a, you can just uh, click a photograph or um, it can be a video or a sound piece or, you know, uh, so I think these um, flexibilities uh, makes this project really interesting for me. So, yeah, and I think most of the other things uh, Leana has covered already. Yeah. <laughs> and Mahalo, I, 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 I'm actually uh, really, uh, you know, I think I, I feel blessed that I am actually around uh, you guys and, uh, you know, making my share or trying to um, share my uh, part, you know, um, in these projects. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, so um, that's a little bit about both of our projects and this idea of this flexibility that you were talking about. Uh, Leanna and I were just kind of talking ahead of time on how much at this stage in the process, kind of as we're kind of putting this call out for this creativity, we don't know what the final product is going to look like. We don't know what we're, we're getting ourselves into, really. This is really um, determined by, by what we receive. And that's going to be kind of what, what determines what our art installation becomes, what we create together, and what the publication, because it won't be what it is without what we receive. So we can't have a vision ahead of time of what it is until we know what it is we're working with. So it's really going to be fun for us to see what this project evolves into depending on what we receive. And I've already see, received such interesting ideas and questions um, about so many different possibilities. So just really excited to see this, um, this project beginning to manifest. So at this point, we have time for some questions um, and or comments. We can have a chat. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything formal here. Just any thoughts kind of in hearing and reflecting um, on what you've heard so far. Um, you can, if you want, you can write in the chat questions or if you want to just um, say something, please go ahead. Um, we have time now. Open floor. And I know a lot of people in this room are not shy. <laughs> so feel free to jump in if you have any questions. Milian, I have a question for you on just in hearing what the um, talking about the in between project, how do you how do you see that relating to our project more deeply in a way after hearing them uh, both Leana and Sadaf speak about it? You know, I think myself, I'm I'm really excited because I see them as as merged already in my mind, you know, on some deep level. Um, I see it as sort of an orchestration of work. Um, the books being uh, little um, snippets into people's lives. Uh, and then the other additional in-between works being um, a bit more ambitious, but I'm not sure because you can, you can, you can make big books. I mean, I, 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 you can make big paper and, and the book could be four, you know, three feet by four feet too in huge pieces of paper and whatever. But what I, I really appreciate is that we're all um, part of thinking about this time because for me, I just am, am, I feel really hopeful. And I, I didn't feel that hopeful before a lot of this because, you know, we're all in a sense um, waiting for something to happen. And this way, we're not waiting. We're being proactive. We're, we're engaging each other. We could do um, collective or cooperative pieces as well. 
And I, I really appreciate, um, Leana, the understanding that I think you're absolutely correct. We are at the beginning of, of a new, and I don't want to say normal, but a new time. And the time is for us to quicken in terms of understanding that we need to do work better. We need to work differently. We need to um, go to different places. And however we can do that together, I say yes, yes, yes. And I also say mahalo because nothing's easy, you know, um, but I think if we actually choose to work together, you know, and, and, and be like a constellation and start, you know, mapping ideas that maybe this will offer us other opportunities, you know, and I'm not sure what that means, but as an artist, I'm okay with that, you know, and, and I think that's the important part about um, creativity is that you don't have to know the answers. You know, you don't have to have something exact right now. And Sadaf knows that in terms of the arts, you know, and any of you guys who have practices, you know, you know, uh, you're going to, you're going to do a lousy first draft and then things come afterwards. And by draft 10 or 26, you might even throw the whole idea out. Like I had to with a project recently. And I just went, really, I have spent that many years on this and this is going, are you kidding? Can't we salvage this? As a matter of fact, the project behind you was supposed to be outreach for a film, but the project behind you ended up being so successful as a project about pain and suffering and healing that now the film that was supposed to be the engine ends up being the caboose. So it ends up being the outreach for this thing. So you just got to be flexible. And if you can't be flexible, then you, it really is hard to be an artist, right? <laughs> So I think for me, I'm so grateful that we're not alone. Most importantly, we're not alone. I just wanna thank each and every one of you. I just feel great relief that I get to be with a bunch of creatives, a bunch of people who really want to speak to this, some serious issues here. So yay, mahalo, mahalo very, very much. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I love I love the idea of focusing on the process. I'm such a process person. And so to embrace the process and not know what it is at the end, it's okay. We don't have to have a vision of what it is necessarily, but it's really kind of going on this process and on the path together. And Leana was saying also in terms of your project, you, you want people to feel like they can also submit something that's a draft and that yes. you're willing to work with them. Is that right? Yes. Too? So yes. Process. Yeah. Kumu totally, totally reminded me about that conversation mm -hmm. we had that, um, you know, our deadline is still March 31st. We've already extended it a couple of times, so we, we need to keep it. Um, but that doesn't mean what you submit to us won't receive our feedback and you'll, you might have a chance to revise your work with that feedback. Um, so whatever you submit um, to us for the in-between project, please know that it may not be like your final draft, right? We wanna make sure that everybody shines and that um, you, know, you get the benefit of, our, of the readers who are on our team. And it's ultimately up to you um, to uh, finalize it or to just keep it as is. Um, and then also something that Sadaf reminded me of this being a digital publication. We don't quite know yet how that will look digitally. I mean, it will probably be a website of some sort, um, but we want this digital publication to accommodate writing, but also um, maybe somebody wants to add an audio file to a poem they're submitting where you could hear them read it in their uh, language, or you could hear the author's voice, or somebody might want to add an, a video media file to whatever piece they're submitting. So we're trying to push, we will try to push as much as we can within the web space that we may have, um, but um, things are still a bit up in the air. Great, thank you, Liana. Does anybody else have any questions or thoughts or impressions of hearing these projects? You know, these have really <laughs> kind of, we've just developed these projects and these are all just coming from ideas. And it's fun to hear kind of what other people's impressions are to just listening and knowing that we've all kind of been through this incredibly trying time together. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead. Uh, my name is Blaine and uh, I'm, I'm 
I participated in the APLP program through the East West Center and now I'm part of the alumni board on the East West Center. Uh, we're trying to, uh, with uh, the APLP alumni board, we, we are doing a project where uh, we're trying to help people through the through the pandemic and present to them websites that they could go to and help them, whether it's um, financially, um, like they can do um, um, entrepreneur projects online or they can do mental health you know, sources. So we're trying to get some information to them. I joined today to see, you know, what this was about. And so I could share with the APLP, um, you know, more about this. My understanding is you, there's going to be some seminars uh, online through the March, through the month of March. Uh, people don't have to participate in one or all of those in order to um, make a submittal. Is that correct? And um, yeah, the information you provided to me will be beneficial. I'll share on our Facebook page, more information. And also we have a board meeting on next Friday and I'll present that to the board members too. So thank you very much for sharing this. And it sounds like an awesome project. Awesome. Thank you, Blaine. Yeah, we would love for you to share with everybody, please invite everybody to uh, join on both projects. And so the, the, the workshops that we'll be doing will be um, with Kumu Meliana and it'll be around kind of creating the booklets and talking, just talking through this whole process together. Um, Meliana is brilliant at, at, um, at engaging the students and talking about this and taking everybody straight, taking everybody deep into the project in a very um, simple project. You would think, oh, it's a eight and a half by 11 paper. And then you're Zoom. Yeah, so it's a really engaging uh, project that's a lot of fun. Um, and we'll get to talk and brainstorm through it, but it's not necessary to do the submission. So it's just kind of something to engage and uh, have a good time together and and talk story. Um, and then uh, Leana will be also sharing about their project as well as at the session. So everybody's welcome to join at any of the sessions, but it's again, um, not required. And if you, there's any questions from anybody, um, both of our emails are available and we're happy to answer any questions. So thank you, Blaine. Awesome. awesome, thanks. And thanks for that three minute, I think it's like three minute video of um, how to put the book together, uh, Kumu Meliana. That's Great. awesome. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I look forward to, I guess, trying to put get my creative juices flowing and also make sure to get the other PAC staff involved as well. Wonderful. Great. Thank you, Jason. Yes, twist their arms, get them arting and get them writing. It'll be great. We'd love to have something from all of you. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah, Anybody think, else? Well, yeah. I was going to say, I think Erica was, I, I talked to one of my colleagues and I think Erica wanted to do something with a, she, she started um, learning sewing. So she wants to try and make like a, a fabric. Book. Oh, so kind beautiful. Of <laughs> beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. I have a quick question for any um, alumni alumni that are interested in organizing um, workshops or you know mobilizing other alumni um, where they live. Is there a contact? Uh, who should they reach out to for support? Maybe that would be a question for Christina. If Christina if Christina is on, she's the main liaison to the alumni chapters. And we will be coordinating. We're happy to coordinate more workshops beyond what's already scheduled with specific East West Center alumni uh, chapters. And that's absolutely a possibility. So um, that, oh, Meliana. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, for example, a friend of mine in, in Washington, DC, an Indian friend who has done mural work with me, we, we were talking and I said, okay, so, what are you guys doing for um, Kamala? You know, she's coming to, to Washington, D.C. I mean, you know, come on. And so she said, um, well, they hadn't been thinking about anything. But sure enough, you know, come two weeks later, they had planned a column project. And that blew my mind because it was an opportunity for their community there to, to really put something together. And they got submissions from 50 states. They're like 20, 2,100, 2,500 beautiful designs. They all put them together. And I'm just having a senior moment about the, the woman who was as old as I am, who, put, who helped to put this thing together with, 
with my buddy Rupal Shaw. She's IndyCor in, in DC. And I thought to myself, these are the kinds of things that move energy. These are the kind of things that are so deep and so wonderful. And it, it just like blew my mind. I was so happy. I just said, Kamala needs to be uh, feted. She needs to be celebrated. She needs to know that lots of people care. So it wasn't just an Indian project. It was a project that all sorts of people participated in. And that's kind of like the energy that we're hoping to really engage and involve um, any and all of the center people. And, you know, the fact that I, I am an alum and uh, get to do this is like such a blast because I'm looking forward to it, you know? So I just want you to know that this project will move energy for all of us. And I mean, our projects will move energy for all of us. So that's, that's a wonderful thing to share. Thank you. Absolutely. Mahalo, Maliana. Anybody, other thoughts, uh, questions to want to share before we? I actually um, I want to say that um, it, these projects are not about, you know, only the project project thing. It's, on, it's actually, uh, I feel about to make new connections or, you know, to connect with um, the, you know, uh, with the whole society or your, you know, uh, in this weird time. So I think um, the process is also, you know, uh, uh, very important. And uh, this process is making these projects more interesting and valuable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sada. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. If there aren't any other questions, comments, Anything, any last thoughts? I just want to say really quickly about the in-between, um, something that um, when Kuma Meliano was showing us her drawing of the, of the yin and yang, you know, I was, think, I was thinking, I've been thinking about that image actually as having this in-between space. And when we think of the East-West Center, um, I'm starting to think of that dash between East and West as an in-between space. And so, you know, this project started with just simple lockdown and think, and I'm not, I'm no longer in Guam and I'm not quite in Hawaii yet. I'm in this in-between, um, but I feel like it can expand to so much more that's related to the mission and goals of, of the East West Center. And so I just wanted to plant that seed and put it out there um, that we can continue to think about in between. We can continue to think about um, how we reflect in drawing and, and and um, the Kumu project. I think that's not just for this year, for this moment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanna I'll also comment on your beautiful name, young lady. Um, um, I mean, hello. So we, we, we might have somebody who lives, uh, who's from Guam, but your name is Hawaiian. So you yeah. are and, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm bringing that up because um, for me, it's important that you know, uh, being being a keiki okiyaina nei, that in between is is not it's a liminal space, and I, I accept that liminal is important, but you know the the big problem, and it's a critique, and 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 I'll be on record um, that that the East West Center has really in the past ignored on some levels Hawaii's position in the conversation. So um, that's also a critique, which is important to have or a conversation. So for me, there, there is no in between because we encompass all, as in the ocean is like that. Which part of the ocean belongs to China? Which part of the sunshine belongs to Papakolea versus uh, Kaka'ako? There is no such thing in, in this cosmic sense of, of real and big and deep and wonderful and complicated there is no such thing, you know? I mean, there, there's, there's this fluidity and stuff. And so I think that's really important because the East, West, they missed it on the Hawaii centric as in centered. It wouldn't have, I mean, I get it when they designed it in the fifties or early sixties, but that was a blind side, you know? And I just want to remind people um, where they are and where this project is situated because as far as I'm concerned, you got my orientation, which 
which is Hawaii centric. So that Mahalo notion, Kumu. Between, yeah, the notion yeah. of between is, is I don't a, think of as Hawaii in between East and West, but you're yeah. right. It's it's the it's the place that gives birth to any you know larger value of you know peacemaking or um, yeah. cultural coming together that. Um, yeah. So Hawaii actually has a really important place, uh, to, uh, is a, an important place to, to pivot and to, to share from because the instincts from here are all um, about aloha and energy, you know, so that's where we're all going to, we're not, we don't need to be stuck in the middle of something, we know our place, we know the ground from which we grow, and it's with that intentionality and the and the love part, the aloha, that is really critical for all of us. Otherwise, you know, we're, we are in the middle of, and what we don't know. So I wanna, I'd much rather, you know, be on that va'a of yours <laughs> with that name versus like floating around on a, <laughs> with a, with a vest in the middle of the ocean. I wanna be on something and be somewhere. So that's my humble thought. Thank you for putting up with that. Thank you, Liam. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to you more. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and thank you for, um, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everybody for putting your thoughts out there today, um, for speaking openly about all of this. I think we're just beginning the dialogue and we're continuing our dialogue. And I think that's so much a part of what all of us have experienced at the East West Center and being in Hawaii is this, this idea of dialogue. And we all love to engage in and the dialogue here so i see both of these projects um, as part of that and it's kind of coming from this time we're reflecting back on our past and we're moving forward together um, so with that i want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon and this is just the beginning and if you have any questions you know now how to reach out to us any questions along the way um, uh, we're, we're, we're accepting everything. We just want everybody engaged and enjoying the process and in, jumping in and enjoying and joining in on the project. So we really look forward uh, to seeing more of you all and working with you in the coming months. Aloha. Thank you so much, Annie. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. Aloha. Take care, everyone. Aloha.